Welcome to the Shard Show. This podcast is brought to you by our sponsors. Trendsetter Realty. Don't risk buying or selling your home alone. Get help from a professional. Your property purchase or sale is one of the most significant financial transactions of your life. Steve Gibson is ready to help you through the process today. Get assistance with property listings, closings, and more. And Hilltop Laundromat and Skill Games. Hilltop Laundromat and Casper offers complete service with pickup and delivery available. For your convenience, we're open seven days a week. We also have coin laundry open 24 hours a day, every day. Come to locally owned laundry experts who also have skill games where you can win big. Also, Bubbles R Us Laundry. Bubbles R Us Laundromat in Evansville is open Monday through Friday with drop-off and pickup. Our coin-operated laundromat is open 24-7 for your convenience. It's a Grind Coffee. At It's a Grind Coffee, we're focused on your coffee experience. It's a Grind Coffee also has skill games where you can win big. Hey guys, don't forget about our raffle fundraiser. The raffle is benefiting a desperately needed life-saving kidney transplant for Polo Hermosillo. In the raffle, you could win an Xbox One X, valued at $500, and a Steak Lovers Bundle from Braddis Meat Market, valued at $300. What comes with that? You get ribeyes, New York strip steaks, fillets, T-bones, and top sirloins. Or you can win cash. We have a 50-50 raffle where half of the money would go to the winner and half of the money would go towards the cause. Now, tickets are sold and sponsored by these local businesses. Braddis Meat Market, Hilltop Laundry, Bubbles R Us Laundry, and It's a Grind Coffee Shop. Tickets are $5 each or 5 for 20 and the drawing will be held on October 31st. Now remember, winners will be notified by phone, so even if you win, we'll let you know if you're not there. Alright guys, thank you. The Shark Show, with your hosts, Arturo and Shannon Delgado. I think you just want to fight to fight. I don't want to fight to fight. My husband doesn't say nice things to me. That's fucking bullshit. I say nice shit to you all the fucking time. Like what? I say you're fucking beautiful. I say you're pretty. I say I fucking love you. When? I think you're having dreams. What do you, you want me to start writing it down? I'd run out of fucking paper. Oh, would ya? Because then you'd actually be keeping track and know that you have to say something so that you can mark it down. What? I have to say it so I can mark it down? Yeah, you'd have to do it. I would run to out of try paper. and prove your point. That was that would be it. No, you don't say nice shit to me. I say nice shit to you all the fucking time. No, you don't. I do too. You're a liar and a fat mouth. I swear to God, you're going back in the day and start you 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 started smoking weed again. That's what the fuck. No, I did it. Did you start smoking weed again? No, and, and you're doing it without me because I, I don't smoke it. weed. I didn't. I mean, not that I have anything against it. I think it should be fucking legal. So why? But no. But did you start smoking weed again? No. Well, your memory is severely getting impaired. We're going to take you in for a fucking genealogy test. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. We are Arturo and Shannon Delgado. Say hi. Hi. All right. So I like how you mouthed that. He tells me to say hi, and I say hi, and he's like, I can't, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> no, it's because we haven't introduced video yet. Uh, we've got some cool green screen studio coming soon. Yay. Yeah. Um, we've redone our studio, uh, so we're going to be able to do an actual show. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, you guys will watch us. Of course, we'll still have the, the audio available. You know, if you just want to hear us on your way to work or if you've got, you know, 10, 15 minute break and you want to laugh your ass off because we're funny. He's funny. He's right there. He's halfway correct. He is funny. <coughs> I'm not so funny. I think you're hilarious. Well, see, there you go. He's writing it down in the book right now. Trying to keep track. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of shit in the news. Like, I was just reading this morning that, uh, I guess Kevin Hart and Cat Williams have a little beef. Yeah, I heard something about it, but I think I was kind of on Facebook land. So, what's that up about? Well, I guess, uh... Well, you know, Kevin Hart's got a new movie with Tiffany Haddish coming out. Yeah, no, it's already out. I don't know, is it? I well, want to see it so bad. Well, you know, I guess uh, Cat Williams went on one of these uh, on one of these radio interviews and started talking crap about how saying that you know if you ain't white or you got to be in the white man's pocket to be successful in Hollywood, 
And I don't know if you know this, anybody who's watched the, the you know, Scary Movie 3 with Kevin Hart, nobody remembers Kevin Hart in it? Exactly. That son of a bitch has been grinding. I remember watching his stand-up and going, who the fuck is that guy? That guy's funny. And then <laughs> he came out with specials. And then more specials and more specials. So this dude was grinding. This For guy sure. was working hard. For sure. You know, and Cat Williams says, well, you got me in your pocket. So, uh, and then he was talking about, you know, uh, uh, Tiffany Haddish, how she hasn't paid her dues, and all of a sudden she's all in this movies and stuff like that. And, you know, I can't tell you a Tiffany Haddish special. I've seen her before, like on Def Comedy Jam and stuff like that. But I don't, I, I don't go, oh, that's Tiffany Haddish. You don't? Now, because right. she's in so much stuff. Right now. Yeah. Now, yeah. For sure. But not before, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I didn't know who she was either. Yeah. So, but I like her. Yeah. And you know what? But That's just hating to hate. That, exactly. So Kevin Hart went on The Breakfast Club with Tiffany Haddish and was talking about how, like, that he was just being a hater. That Cat Williams was just being a hater. Yeah. And uh, said, you know, it's not. It's not Hollywood's fault you blew your shot being lazy. You chose the drugs over your career. Ooh. Yeah, right, right? I guess Cat Williams fired back. And it's he said, uh, today, actually, I was reading today. I don't know when he said it. It might have been yesterday. But he said <laughs> it today. Or I read it today. I'm like, what? I read it today. Okay. That the next time, there, it's going to be physical. See me in the streets. Yeah, see me in the streets. Remember, I'm out in these streets, motherfucker. This is his quote. <laughs> For real? Yeah. And I'm too little midget ass fighting. <laughs> but Kevin Hart's a tough. Kevin little Hart's little a dude. monster, dude. I, I watch his workouts. I like. Oh, well, you've shown me his workouts with The Rock. He's always posting oh. stuff with The Rock. No. With himself. Oh. Every day on my Snapchat. Every freaking day he's hitting that gym. Yeah, he, he's, he's a, a tough little shit. He's a monster. Anyway, so I don't know. That'd be great to see. Like, okay, Cat Williams, you might be street, but I mean. Cat Williams so, might just fucking shoot his ass. I don't know. Well, how is it, though? What makes you street? Being a crackhead? Does that make you street? Oh, come on. Don't oh, go. come on. That's a low blow. How is that a low blow? Like, you, okay, look at Cat Williams four years ago. Look at him now. He looks like he's aged about 15 years. Well, I'm going to have to see a picture to back that up. Well, I'm telling you right now. Oh, um, also in the news, all you Republican haters out there, uh, Sarah Palin's son got his third arrest for domestic violence. Ouch. Yeah. Um, but, you know, his mom's probably got connections or whatever. Uh, he's an Iraqi war veteran. His well, mom. maybe it's like PTSD then. That's what his mom said. That stuff is real. My dad was a Vietnam vet, and that is for real. So your dad used to do that shit? If you woke my dad up, okay, my dad would sleep in a recliner because he couldn't lay down or stand up for too long, okay? So he'd be up and down all night walking around the house, and he'd fall asleep in the recliner. If you go to wake that man up, he would nearly knock your freaking head off every single time. Yeah. Well, yeah, but and even in that case, you don't. If you just, like, say somebody just woke you up and you punched them in the face, did you know you can't get charged for that? Well. You're not in your right mind? Your mind is not awake yet? Anyway. You but, shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> you can say what you want to say, but this is his third time. Yeah. And since 2016, his first time uh, in 2016, he was pointing a gun at a girlfriend and was holding her hostage. Police showed up, took him into custody. Of course, he pled it out. He got probation. The second time was in 2017. He broke into his parents' house. When his dad confronted him, he beat his dad up. He didn't get an assault charge for that. He pled it down to criminal trespassing. Wow. Yeah, so this most recent arrest, uh, he got domestic violence. He beat her up. When she tried to call the cops, he tore the phone out of her hand. Uh, he lied to the dispatcher. Uh, and the cops showed up, of course, to see what's going on. He resisted arrest, so he got domestic violence, interfering with the report, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct. I bet you he does not see the inside of a jail cell for more than a week. Well, you know, I don't know. 
I was all on the vet side right there until that story. And I have lived that scenario up until the resisting arrest. My ex-husband was very, I didn't do anything. I was protecting myself. And they went with that. He never saw the inside of a jail cell. He got arrested one time, well, and that was it. I'm so We've gone over know. the cops. Yeah, we've gone over the cops here. Right, you know no, I'm, I'm just saying. CPD, yeah, you are what you are, whatever. I'm, I'm thankful there's police out in the streets, you know, doing what they got to do. At the same time, like I've said before, there's a fine line between being vigilant and oppressive. And I think that Casper is really struggling with that, especially... You know, they've got, they've got officers coming from all over the country. We can't get people here. But you know who's amazing? Huh? The Sheriff's Department. The Sheriff's Department. Hats off to the Sheriff's Department. Amen. The Toronto County Sheriffs, you guys are awesome. You guys talk. Uh, yeah, there's a couple dicks amongst you. Of I'm course. Not gonna, I mean, they're at the jail. They deal with that. I'm not going to name day. names. No, the dicks that I know start out dicks at the jail, and then they become okay. Uh, and that's because they have to be around those people. You know, so they, when they pull somebody over, they've got already a sense of you're a freaking person, not a perp. And that's what the Casper Police needs to differentiate on. And, of course, there's still some, some dick Natrona County officers out on the street, but usually another sheriff comes off and that dick cools off. For sure. You know what I mean? It's not, he can't keep being a dick. They but check each other. The Natrona County Sheriff's Office checks each other, and that's what I think the CPD needs to do. CPD comes up, and no matter what, even if they're wrong, they have each other's back. But back to your original point. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I digress. <laughs> I like to go on tangents. <laughs> I hope that he does see the inside of a jail cell until they can get him some mental help. That's clearly what is needed. Yeah, either at some kind of maybe like a mental health facility. Yes. Maybe like a VA health facility. Something like that. Smoke some weed, dude. Calm the fuck down. Well, I, I, you know, I believe that weed can be used for good reasons but it's been approved well I get that but I don't think that that will solve all the world's problems I think that this person needs mental health care no not solve the problems but at least it's going to take a chunk out oh my dog's barking right now so that means uh, that's pretty much it for our podcast today Uh, we appreciate you guys uh, stepping in and listening Uh, we will talk to you guys soon (laughs) we've got to take our dogs outside bye We'd like to give another thank you to our fine sponsors. That's Trend Center Realty, Hilltop and Bubbles Laundry, and it's a grind coffee house. Make sure to catch us next time. Thanks for listening.